Hey everyone, it's Chelsea from Smoldering Serpents. I apologize for the really long delay between videos here. Um, in between the last one and now, we had Thanksgiving, so we were gone for a while. When we came back, we had a lot of chores to catch up on and some personal stuff to deal with. So it's been a good while since my last introduction video, but now I am moving on to the next one. Um, this is the Asian rat snake video, and uh, some of these videos were taken a while ago because a good portion of those snakes are now in brumation, and I wasn't going to disturb them um, for uh, a YouTube video. So um, uh, I've pieced it all together anyways, and now I'm finally getting around to posting it. Um, this is a, a stack of cages that I don't think I've included um, in any of the previous videos, but I really love it. It's just kind of out of the way. Um, so it doesn't get put into a lot of pictures or videos, but this is um, a five-foot stack that is downstairs on our main floor. And right now this bottom one is empty. Um, it did house Baron, our male calico black rat, for a bit, but we've moved things around and we're going to end up moving Sterling, um, our older male uh, neotropical bird-eating snake, down here. So he's going to get moved down here in the next couple days. I really love the way that this cage came out in particular, um, but all three of these are really great. This one houses Taser, he's our male Taiwan beauty snake, and it's early in the morning when I'm taking this video right now, so nobody's out, uh, everyone's still sleeping, but Taser uh, likes to hang out in his warm hide right there, um, or usually right there, but he also, he just goes wherever he wants in this cage, we catch him out and about frequently. Um, this is the cage I'd like to bulk out a little bit more with some more bigger branches, but I do really like the way that it kind of turned into uh, looking like a tree with these upward branches. The upward branches don't do much for usability. Um, Taser will kind of drape over them a little bit, but I do need to add some more horizontal branches to this cage in particular. And the top one here is uh, Kalika's cage. She's a uh, female Vietnamese blue beauty snake. And she is way up at the top, that big piece of cork you see at that upper shelf. She's up there. She's nearly always up there, um, but she also is frequently moving around. We catch her draped all over the branches and such. So uh, she will not be in here permanently and neither will Taser. Um, this stack will eventually be all neotropical bird-eating snakes. Um, we'll have all three of ours down here uh, with our fourth one uh, being upstairs. So for now, these are grow-out cages for Kalika and Taser. Um, and they'll do just fine for probably the next year until we get around to their full-sized adult enclosures. But anyways, I thought I'd give you a quick tour of this stack. I do love it a lot. These are five by two by three foot cages, so they're a pretty good size, um, and they were a lot of fun to make, and I think they came out really well so far. Uh, but anyways, we'll move on to the introductions. Um, like I said, some of these videos were taken, uh, probably two months ago or so, um, but I've pieced it all together into one video at this point, and uh, we'll get through all of the Asian rats now. So first up we have Annapel. She's our adult female Russian rat snake, and we've had her from a hatchling. She's about six and a half years old now. Um, Annapel is about as sweet as you can get in a snake. She's a very typical Russian rat snake. She's curious, she's active, she's extremely docile. Um, she's also the snake responsible for beginning our journey in improving seasonal cycles for the snakes that we keep. Um, I was not around when Annapel was a baby, but Andrew had to learn the hard way that Russian rats often will not leave their seasonal cycling up to our decisions, and they often just demand it. Um, Annapel went off food when she was only a few months old in her very first winter, and typically you'll see people say, oh, you know, my Russian rat will eat through the winter, no problem. Annapel was not one of those Russian rats and she went off food and would not eat until she was cooled. So she's the original snake that opened our eyes to the importance of proper seasonal cycling, and we've cooled her every winter since, and we do the same for our other Russian rats, especially after they're a year or two old. Um, we'll usually avoid cooling them the first winter or two just so that um, they're a little bit larger and stronger before we start putting them through that process. But, as Annapel showed us, sometimes they do not give us that option, and in that case, they must be cooled. So, Annapel is not a huge Russian rat. I would say she's probably squarely average size. She's about five feet long. And uh, she's just been a phenomenal ambassador for the species, and honestly, an ambassador for snakes in general. 
She's one of the first ones that we hand to guests in our house because she is so sweet. Um, another reason we tend to give her to people who are a little more unsure about snakes but would like to try holding one is because she um, she's not head shy. And this is one of the things that Russian rats are known for and we see as a consistent pattern in our own Russian rats. They're not head shy at all. In fact, with Annapel in particular, well, we obviously don't do this on any regular basis, you can actually wrap your hand around her head and she will not really respond much at all. And anyone who's dealt with other snakes knows that touching their head, especially putting your hand around their head, is usually a huge no and they'll jerk back really quickly. But the Russian rats, um, none of them do. They're, they're very bold. They do not mind being touched really anywhere on their body. And uh, they're extremely nosy. We often joke that uh, when we want our ears checked, we'll take the Russian rats out because somehow if you lift them up on your shoulders, they will always end up poking their faces in our ears. Um, uh, Annapel does this. She likes to nose around everywhere she can get and uh, she's quite pushy, um, which is a lot of fun, honestly. There aren't many snakes who behave like that. And here we have her mate, Kirill, who's actually the most nosy out of all our Russian rats. Um, he will insistently push his face into your ear, um, into your armpit, anywhere he can get his face wedged into. Uh, you can see he's a lot less yellow than Annapel. Um, they are not related, and Kirill actually came as some of the first het melanistic Russian rats in the U.S. Um, so he is het melanistic. We don't have any interest in pursuing that morph or any morph of Russian rats. So we have just paired him with Annapel so far. And uh, I wonder, I really do wonder if the het melanistic part is affecting his color because I haven't seen too many that look like him. But regardless, he is still a really pretty boy. He has more of a silver and black look, um, still with the yellow chin. And you can see his belly is yellow, um, although much more muted than Annapel. Krill is a fairly small boy. Um, he's five and a half years old and he is about four feet long uh, and fairly light bodied, which is uh, typical of the males we've found so far. And um, he's a really nice boy. He gets extremely restless in the spring. He is um, a pretty passive breeder. We actually had some question marks about him the first time we paired them because he was just not interested at all. And he ended up getting the job done every time we've paired them. Um, but it is interesting seeing that spring breeding behavior. He gets extremely restless for a month or two and then calms right back down. Um, so again, Russian rats, they cycle hard and that translates into some really interesting, um, and sometimes confusing behavioral changes throughout the year, but once you get used to their quirks, um, they're not unpredictable. They just, um, they swing a lot throughout the seasons in behavior, the amount of food that they want, um, the temperatures that they want. In the spring, Corel loves to sit in a low 90 degree basking spot, which is really warm for the species, but he actively seeks it out and just wants to soak up all that warmth. Um, and then by about late summer, he switches to wanting nothing to do with heat. So we usually switch out his bulb in the middle of the summer so that he can have access to the temperatures that he wants according to what time of the year it is. So it, it is an interesting experience dealing with a species like this and really paying attention to what they want and their behavioral changes. Krill will not be staying with us permanently. We have another male who we'd like to use for breeding. Uh, to Annapel and uh, another female that we have that I'll show you next. Um, so eventually Kirill will be looking for a really good home where we are going to be very picky about it. Um, and if that home doesn't come along, he'll stay with us. But we certainly have enjoyed him while we have him and uh, he will hopefully make someone else very happy later on down the line. But um, <laughs> for now, we enjoy this little clown. He is a really fun snake to have around. This is Tanara. Um, she is Krill and Annapel's daughter from last year, so she's about 18 months old now. Uh, we always planned to keep back one female. We knew we wanted a second female Russian rat, and the nostalgia of having one of Krill and Annapel's babies, um, we just knew we wanted to hold one back. And Tanara was the chunkiest girl of the clutch, and there was just something about her that drew us to her. Uh, you can see she is coming along beautifully with her color change. I'm actually surprised she is as dark and yellow as she is already. 
Um, so she's definitely getting more of Annapel's yellows. Tanara has inherited her mother's uh, appetite issues as well, and they're not really issues, it's just what you have to expect with the species. Um, Tanara went off food when she was only a couple months old and was demanding to be cooled, just like her mother. So Tanara has been cooled um, every winter since she hatched, and we usually do a shorter winter cycle for her, but um, she does need that cycle. And she comes out of it hungry and ready to grow and uh, has been doing really well. You can see she's a little zippy. She is definitely a little more um, nervous than other young Russian rats that we've had. And um, she was the more nervous one of her clutch, which is partly why we kept her, because people do expect a certain friendliness and uh, calmness from Russian rats, which is... You know, it's usually reasonable to expect it from the species, but um, we figured that we might as well keep the one who might be a little more squirrely and uh, make sure the ones who are more confident were going to homes who had such high expectations. Um, she has calmed down quite a bit. She's a lot more easygoing. She's extremely visual. She likes to watch everything that's happening. You can see just there, she turned her head down. She's watching the leaves blowing around on the ground. <laughs> um, she, uh, she's growing well. She's about an average size for an 18-month-old Russian rat. Um, on the track that she's going now, I'd expect her to get about as big as her mom. But uh, she's been really great. We're going to be moving her up in cage size shortly. And uh, we're really excited to watch her continue to grow and develop. She's, she's been a real joy to get to know. And it's really fun having the daughter of one of our most beloved snakes. Um, and that's just one of the bonuses of being a breeder is you do get to watch your snakes produce their own babies and watch those babies grow up and it's quite a lot of fun. This dude is Kovaki and he is the male that we will be raising up to breed with both Annapel and Tanara. He's unrelated to both of them. So we wanted to prioritize bringing in a fresh line for our females and as you can see Kovaki is a real looker. He has an extraordinary amount of yellow for his age. He is the same age as Tanara, um, within a couple days, I believe. Um, you can see he's also quite a bit bigger. He's an overachiever in every way, and uh, it's been amazing watching those yellows coming in so quickly. He was uh, probably one of the most, uh, not defensive, just kind of nervous and feisty uh, baby Russian rat snakes I've ever dealt with, and he has since calmed down really nicely. He is active, and he's quite quick when he wants to be, but you can see he has calmed right down into that typical Russian rat temperament. So Kavaki came from uh, Tim Spuckler, and I, as a side note, can't recommend him enough because he's been great every time we've bought something or sold something to him. Um, and you can see <laughs> this little guy is just out of this world beautiful. Um, Kovaki is going to get the biggest enclosure that any of our Russian rats will get because at the rate that he's growing, he will almost certainly end up being our biggest Russian rat snake. So he is going into a six by two by three and a half foot enclosure. And with how active he is and how quickly he settles into new homes, we've moved him around a little bit as he's grown so quickly. I anticipate that he's going to make full use out of a cage that size. You could see Russian rats, you know, they don't stay still. They're certainly not lap snakes, but they're extremely docile and very curious about what's going on. This is a snake that has been getting a lot more popular in the last little bit, and I think that's really great. I do think that uh, there needs to be the disclaimer with them about their seasonal cycling because having the ability and the confidence to brumate a snake um, is not something that everyone has. So, you know, if you have a Russian rat snake that eats through the winter, that's great. Personally, I do believe the benefits of brumating them far outweighs um, the alternative. So I brumate them regardless. But um, having the ability to brumate them is essential because sometimes they will just stop eating in the fall and you need to be able to get them back on track. But otherwise, they are a fantastic species and I'm excited to see them getting more popular. Moving on to our next species, this is Jinx. He's our Kunisher Island Japanese rat snake. Um, and just to clarify, um, he is just a Japanese rat snake and Kunisher Island is a certain locality that tends to be much more blue and a little bit smaller than the mainland Japanese rat snakes. So uh, Jinx was actually the only snake I was able to bring with me when I moved from Canada. 
and I got him almost exactly three years ago uh, when he was just a tiny little baby and uh, he was a dream snake for me and uh, has continued to be a dream snake for me because he is just amazing. Um, they start off as very dull silverish brown hatchlings which honestly I think they are still really beautiful even at that stage but as you can see they get better and better with age. Jinx is now just over three years old and he already looks like this. Um, this is a species that does not really have a peak in color the way that a lot of species have where they kind of hit their brightest color at sexual maturity and start to go down, sometimes slowly, but usually start to fade with age. Kunisher Island Japanese rat snakes do not fade. They get more and more blue with age. The bluest individuals I've seen have been in their 20s. So I am very much looking forward to watching this guy grow up and grow old with me. And uh, he is such a sweet boy. Um, you're gonna see him go up my arm and onto my shoulder a lot. And I flip the camera around a couple times because he, he just wants to be on my shoulder or my head all the time. And uh, a lot of snakes do want to get up on my shoulder, but there is something about the way that Jinx constantly seeks out crawling up on my head. He just wants to be on the highest point and it's very endearing. Um, and he's done this since he was a 20 gram baby. Um, he is about full size now. He's about four feet long. And uh, I don't anticipate he's going to get much larger than this. But as you can see, he is a fantastic little boy. And, um, and uh, we will be producing them for the first time, not next year, but the year after. Japanese rat snakes do benefit from being cooled in the same way that Russian rat snakes do. I don't think they uh, want it quite as much as Russian rat snakes do. We have had three Japanese rat snakes and none of them have gone off food in the winter. Um, they have not been brumated yet because we have had to set ourselves up to be able to brumate the number of snakes that we have at this point. So uh, next, starting next winter, they will all be brumated, but it is something to keep in mind with them that they do benefit from that. Um, but they don't require it the same way. Um, so we'll see how they do after being cooled next year, and, uh, and I will definitely update on any behavioral changes they might have. Um, <laughs> once again, up on my shoulder. <laughs> um, but yeah, they're phenomenal snakes. All of mine have been really, really friendly and laid back. A little bit quick, sometimes a bit shy, but never really defensive. They have fantastic appetites. Um, they're just really, really great snakes all around. And here we have Jazz. She's our female Kunisher Island Japanese rat snake. And she is only two years old, which is a little hard to believe. Um, I believe she might be approaching two and a half now. Um, but she is just really quite large for her age. And she has always been a really um, stocky snake uh, in, in build. You can see she's just got a lot more heft to her than Jinx has. So um, it'll be interesting to see if as she matures, if she slims out a little bit or not. It doesn't seem to matter how much or how little food we give her. She just retains that really chunky body condition. I'm not complaining. She's always been really robust and healthy and, uh, and has been doing really, really well with us. And you can see she has incredible color. She actually went through a phase um, earlier this summer where she was more blue than she is now and her head retained that blue and her body kind of went more towards the green side at this point after a couple sheds. So we'll see if she goes back to blue or not. Typically the males are more blue than the females, um, but I have seen Jazz's parents and she has the genetics to be quite blue even as a female. So we'll see where she goes with a little bit more age. But um, so like I said, she's about two and a half years old and uh, we will not be breeding them next year, but the year after. And based on the size she is already, she'll be more than ready for that. Um, Jazz has always been extremely sweet and laid back, uh, much less quick and nervous than even Jinx was. Um, she has just been phenomenal from the beginning um, with an endless appetite. That is the one thing that all of our Japanese rats have had in common is a very aggressive appetite. She will come racing from across the cage for anything that moves. So um, we are a little bit careful with our fingers when we take her out, but afterwards she is just a real sweetheart. She is content to just sit on her hands. As you can see, she doesn't really try to go for my shoulder or my head the way that Jinx does. Um, she is 
Probably the closest to a lap snake that we have as far as rat snakes go. She's just really content to hang out on your hand and soak up that warmth and uh, just kind of watch what's going on around her. She's one of our most active snakes within her enclosure. She's always out, always sprawled across branches. And she's just a really uh, observant girl. She just watches whatever's going on. We often catch her tilting her head to get a better view when the dogs are walking in the room or something. She has been moved around from cage to cage a little bit. It really does not seem to affect her at all. So when we do have to play musical chairs, sometimes she usually is the one that ends up moving. Um, she's now in her permanent cage. But uh, wherever she's been, she's always been a ton of fun to watch and interact with. <laughs> you can see that sweet little face. That turned blue so quickly. Even as a baby, she had a hint of blue on her cheeks. And it's just gotten stronger and stronger with age. A funny thing about Japanese rats is we've actually found they go really, really long between shed cycles. She had one point where she actually doubled her size and did not shed for about six months. Jinx has gone even longer than that when he was young. And I'm not quite sure why that is. I've never had another species that takes so long between shed cycles and can put on so much size without shedding. So I'm not really sure why that is, but it's a definite pattern we've seen with these guys, um, which is interesting, but it makes it even more exciting when they finally do shed and, uh, and reveal some new colors. Okay, so this is one of two snakes that you won't actually see me handling in this video. Um, this is Kalika, our female Vietnamese blue beauty snake. She is just over two years old. And our Vietnamese blue beauty snakes do not like being handled, and we're not ones to push that um, if they've shown that they are not improving. So our VVBs we largely leave alone in the enclosure. Um, to give you a better look at her, I will include some photos. Here you can see her draped on my arm. This was the last one-handed picture I was able to get of her. And on the right, she is eating her chicken dinner. <laughs> Um, and then in this photo, you can see that she is sprawled around her branches. This is typically how we find her in the enclosure. Um, although, you know, it's hard to get a good video of her when she's like that because I try not to scare her. Um, we do work with them within the enclosures to improve their confidence with interaction. Um, but to us, you know, them being confident does not equal them enjoying being handled. So the VVBs have actually become quite fun to interact with while they're in their enclosures. You can see me wiggling my fingers in the reflection there. By turning on the food response, it really seems to turn off the fear response for them to some degree. So Kalika has always been more nervous than Phoenix is. And uh, you can see her pulling back a couple times and she's certainly not coming down all the way to me. Um, her body is not leaving that safe spot up there, which is her favorite place in the enclosure. But she does come to investigate, and I can reliably get her to come out um, on her own most of the time. So I do actually really enjoy interacting with them, despite them being um, two of the only snakes you really do not handle. And you'll see here when we switch over to Phoenix that he is a lot more confident. He's a lot more easygoing and relaxed um, with interacting when I'm wiggling my fingers for him. Funny enough, he is an absolute nightmare to handle, and he almost always has been. He is extremely defensive the second he is touched, um, and despite us working with him consistently and patiently, he did not show any sign of improvement. So we've pretty much decided to just leave him be in peace, because as you can see, he's actually a really calm and confident snake when we leave him alone in his enclosure. Um, and using the method that I talked about with wiggling my fingers and turning on that food response has actually shown really amazing improvement with how willing he is to come out and see me. Um, and we're to the point now where he can be completely out and I can open the door and feed him or do water changes and he is okay with that. So it's really just being touched that they really don't like. And, um... We always give it an honest shot with trying to tame our snakes because um, helping them be comfortable being handled is useful. They do need to be checked over sometimes or weighed. But um, at the end of the day, if they're not showing any improvement, we don't handle our snakes enough or as insistently that it would be very important for them to tolerate being handled if they really, really don't like it. Um, if it's medically necessary, we can handle them. Um, they won't like it, but also this would only be in case of emergency or for very occasional checkups. So 
Um, <laughs> you can see he's very curious about anything really, and he's not too worked up. There are some snakes I would never tease like this with wiggling my fingers because they just bonk right into the door and are really upset when they don't get food after that feeding response is triggered. But Phoenix actually really gives me the impression that he is just calmly curious about things. And, uh, and I, I really enjoy interacting with him through the door where he feels safe and I know that he's not going to get upset. And uh, he's free to leave whenever he wants to. And as you can see, sometimes he'll back off a little bit, but he is always curious and uh, usually leaves his little snout sticking out. Even if he does retreat, he'll leave his face sticking out to watch what's happening next. Um, so I didn't actually say, but Kaliga was two years old and she is about five and a half feet long at this point. Phoenix is just over a year and he's closing in on four and a half feet. So he's growing at a much more rapid pace than she did. Um, so we'll see how big they end up being. Um, we are prepared for, you know, the largest size that VBBs typically get, but um, we'll have to see how their growth keeps on going or if it tapers off. <laughs> they have great appetites. They have done really, really well since we got them. And uh, despite them being the snakes that we least interact with, I actually enjoy them quite a lot. And here we have another kind of beauty snake that is completely the opposite <laughs> in personality to our VBBs. Uh, this is Taser. He is our two-year-old male Taiwan beauty snake. And he is, as you can see, extremely laid back, very easy to handle. Um, at worst, he's a little quick sometimes, and with him getting so much size now, he can uh, get out of hand pretty quickly if you're not prepared for him to dart, but it's actually really uncommon now that he does that. He just likes to calmly explore and take in his surroundings, and you can see how absolutely beautiful he's getting. Um, Taiwans are really beautiful right from hatching, although those yellows take a while to really come in. And you'll see when we flip to our younger female, um, the yellows really become much more saturated with age. And I honestly think that Taiwans are the underrated beauty snake. I know everyone goes nuts for the blue beauty snakes, the Ridley Eye, like they're really popular and are becoming more popular and they're gorgeous. Like I said, I do really love our Vietnamese blue beauties. But the Taiwans, they're so easy and really stunning. I, you know, they're just something that wasn't on my radar, but Andrew has always dreamed of having them. And so it was really at his request that we, we got Taser to begin with. And Taser just won me over in a way that very few snakes have, where he just blew my expectations right out of the water. He is so pleasant to interact with and to handle and has been such an easy snake to care for right from the beginning. Um, and you can see how impressive he's getting. He has a really long ways to go. He's, mm, he's about four and a half, maybe four and three quarter feet long. So he has a good ways to go. Taiwan's usually end up being about seven feet long, somewhere around there. So I expect that he'll get there. He's growing at a really good clip right now. Um, he is, like I showed you, he is in that middle cage in that first stack that I started the video with, and he makes full use of the cage. I actually find Taiwans are really good display snakes if they're set up properly. They can be a little bit shy. Um, they don't typically sprawl all the way out and just sit there out in the open, at least ours don't, um, but he is almost always visible. So he'll keep his body hidden, but he will be poking out watching what's happening. And he'll actually move from hiding spot to hiding spot quite frequently throughout the day. Uh, you can see even his belly is beautiful. They really, they just look like they have highlighter yellow um, striped down their bodies. And one of my favorite things about beauty snakes is the way that their pattern changes over the length of their body. And uh, I always find it funny, you know, with other species like corn snakes, you see people breeding morphs trying to achieve this perfect striped look and here we have this species that just naturally has flawless stripes. Um, I just cannot get enough of those tail stripes that beauty snakes have. <laughs> Last but not least we have Buttercup, our one-year-old female Taiwan beauty snake. And you can see her colors are more muted than Taser. They have not quite reached highlighter yellow <laughs> yet. Um, whether they ever will I'm not sure because they do come from different breeders and their parents do look quite different from each other. I'm guessing Buttercup's gonna be more of a gold and very dark black than Taser, who is more of a bright yellow with some more white in his sides. 
So we'll have to see how they end up. Um, Buttercup is a little bit more squirrely as they tend to be until they pass a year old. Um, so she's just now starting to calm down. We just moved her to a new enclosure and she's actually doing really, really well with the uh, uh, method that I described with turning the feeding response on in order to turn the fear response off. Um, she's actually gained a ton of confidence in the last few months and she's also come a really long ways with handling. She's a lot more laid back and calm. So I am really excited to see where she's going to go in another year or two. And uh, I cannot wait to uh, watch her and Taser grow up together. Okay, so that is it for our Asian rat snake group. I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, the next and last video of this series uh, will hopefully be out much, much quicker than this one was. Um, the last one is just a miscellaneous colubrid video. So it's basically any other snake that hasn't already been in an introduction video. Um, so like I said, I am planning on getting that one out much sooner. Uh, I'm also in the midst of planning a more in-depth and longer video that has to do with how we feed our snakes. So any question that I can possibly think of to answer, um, I'll be including in this video. If you have anything specifically you'd like to know and would like me to include in the video, um, just ask and I will be happy to address anything to do with feeding. Um, so that one is going to take a little bit longer to plan and to piece together, but I am working on it at the moment already. So hopefully I will have that one out shortly after the last um, introduction video. So um, again, I hope you enjoyed this one and I will see you guys shortly with the last of the series.